Hi, thanks for watching. My name is Sam. I'm the CEO, founder of OpusOne.io. Uh, OpusOne.io is a platform for managing music schools online, scheduling, billing, self-enrollment, self-rescheduling. I'm going to show you a demo now. So um, we're going to, uh, so first of all, OpusOne.io is completely web-based. Uh, there's no need for a native app. Nobody wants to download more apps. You can access everything from the web. Uh, including your phone, your tablet, uh, so, um, and same thing for your customers and your teachers as well. So we're gonna look through different settings and I'm gonna show you different scenarios. Uh, so first of all, just let's take a quick look at the business settings. Uh, I happen to also uh, run a music school in Silicon Valley uh, with about a thousand students, um, three locations. Uh, so I'm using my school, Opus Home Music Studio, as an example for uh, those demos, uh, but you will see uh, in your case, you will have your own branding, your own background, your own logo, your own colors as well uh, in your own uh, Opus One IO. Opus One IO will not replace your website, it will be your portal for your clients, your admin, your staff, your, uh, your um, uh, customers, etc. Um, so uh, we're not going to go through all the different settings here. There's a lot of different settings. Um, we're going to go take a look next at locations. So as you can see here, we support different types of locations, uh, home location. So that would be the home of the students. So if you're offering lesson at the students' homes, uh, you can actually also create multiple lo uh, locations of type home with different names. So you can uh, serve, for example, different area of a large uh, metropolitan area, for example, north, south, east, west. Um, so you can assign different teachers to different zones so that they don't uh, necessarily have to um, drive across town, uh, for example. Uh, we also offer online um, support for online lessons, so this has become very important within the past couple of years, especially. Um, you can have teachers uh, available for online lessons only. You can have teachers uh, available in person or both uh, available at the studio, but also taking online students. And then you're going to have your uh, physical locations. You can have more than one. Um, you got, so I'm using, for example, uh, my own school as an example here. We have uh, two locations in Mountain View and one in Palo Alto. As you can see, each location have uh, uh, different rooms, so you can specify different rooms or different names. When you, when you update the location, you have all kinds of information about that location, including the uh, social media links and Yelp and Google reviews, um, address, open hours, closed hours. We have a very um, elaborate way to, and, and, and uh, efficient way to uh, deal with location closures for holidays, so you can, um, we have tutorials on that and allows you to uh, mark all these lessons as closed so that you don't have to manually uh, cancel them one by one and, and deal with teachers um, availability on those days. And so going back to the rooms, you can have description for these rooms so you can describe what's, what's, what equipments they have. You can also specify what services are applicable for these rooms. Um, we're gonna take a look at services in a minute and have as many rooms as you want and assign teachers to those rooms, et cetera, et cetera, on certain days. Um, etc. So locations, we have another type of location for events. So if you're hosting recitals, um, so for example, um, for my school, we host recitals at the Santa Clara uh, Recital Hall, Santa Clara University Recital Hall. Uh, so you can, add, you can add additional locations where you're hosting events, parties, uh, festivals, concerts, showcases, uh, you name it. Uh, we have a whole uh, module to manage recitals as well in Opus One IO. Okay, so next we're gonna take a look at your services. Um, so typical schools are gonna offer a mix of private and group lessons. Uh, we support both. Uh, there is other services that can be uh, set up for recitals, for example. So I talked about that. Um, I'm going to just show you very, very quickly how that works. Uh, you can set up a recital uh, service. Um, you can uh, schedule events. Uh, so here, for example, we have a spring recital event. Um, there's a lot of settings, not going to have time to go through everything, but just want to show you a little bit of the, uh, the key highlights here. You can plan your, uh, your recitals, but have multiple sessions. You can have different students enrolled in that session. You can have different staff assigned, a companist, uh, a stage manager, uh, MC, uh, uh, Husher, whatever you, you need. Um, you, know, you can uh, have the students enrolled, you can keep track of their status. Uh, you can have them confirm, checked in. They can re they can decline or request a change. Uh, let's let's check in actually all these students as if the today's a day of the recital. 
You can assign a performing order. You can also customize custom attributes uh, for piece, composer, uh, duration, instrument, and different things you need to keep track of. Uh, if an accompanist is needed, if a backing track is needed, who is the teacher that enrolled them, who is the assigned teacher that's gonna be uh, their accompanist, things like that. You can move students around. You can navigate between different sessions. Um, and then the beauty of all this is at the end, when your resell is ready, you can lock, you can lock it and you can uh, have a QR code and when people use this QR code, they will be able to see your resale program and be able to, uh, you'll have your, your program generated uh, automatically, including the link with the location, whether it's online or in person, um, and have, um, you know, um, basically no need to print any programs anymore and generate them manually, have it completely dynamically generated. Uh, very, very powerful. And just wanna add also one more thing here. Um, you can also invite your teachers, you can have teachers enroll their own students, or you can have students self-enroll with or without payments. Uh, all kinds of options are available there as well. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to the private and group lessons. Uh, this was just a quick example of a very music school focused uh, feature that um, just by itself for most uh, uh, schools that have switched to Opus 1IO is already a game changer in itself. Okay, back to services. So we're gonna look at, um, so let's take a look at private lessons. So usually when you're gonna have private lessons, you're gonna break them down by instruments. Let's look at guitar, for example. And you're gonna break them down usually by duration, 30, 45, 60 minutes, depending which uh, combination you offer. And then you're gonna also break them down by makeups, regular lessons, and trial lessons. And the reason we break those up that way is because you want to be able to differentiate them. You want to be able to uh, run reports on conversions, on trials, on enrollments, on new, new lessons. Uh, you want your teachers to know whether they're teaching a makeup lesson or a, uh, a regular lesson, whether they're subbing or whether, they are, whether they're getting a new student. So all of that is very clear. And all, each of these services can have different terms and conditions, different name, different color, different uh, photo, uh, different uh, description, different pricing, different teacher availabilities, all kinds of settings that could be different from these services. Uh, so that's why we usually split them up. And you can look at our tutorials as well. We have lots of different ways to batch update them, batch duplicate them, uh, and make it easy for you guys to set it up when you get started. Um, okay, so now let's take a quick look also at another very important thing is your teachers. So you can have teachers um, in the system here. I'm an admin, so I can see all their information. I can see their bio, but I can also see their phone number, their email, their Zoom IDs, and other information you have for them. Uh, uh, you can have obviously photos and, and other uh, details about them. Usually you can also set uh, what we call categorize tags. These are very useful to keep track of uh, things like, for example, uh, languages they speak, the teaching style, what exams they provide, what instruments they actually teach. And then it makes it easy for you to say, for example, I wanna see all the teachers who do a BRSM exam and teach piano um, and uh, speak French, for example. Uh, and then from there, you can do batch SMSs, batch emails. Uh, you can export them, you can visualize them, you can look at their schedule uh, by just uh, you know, opening up their account. Very easy. Um, so here is an example here with that uh, teacher here. Um, so uh, note that uh, I'm seeing their full name, but when your clients, uh, when, when visitors browse your Opus 1IU availabilities, they will not see the full name of the teachers. Uh, they will only see their initials. We also have, as I said, uh, SMS capabilities. Uh, you will see those batch email and batch SMS uh, options here and there throughout the product where you can very easily send a batch SMS to existing clients uh, or to teachers, for example, very easily and let them know that something needs to be done or that you're expecting an answer from them or that the recital has is, is been announced or whatever it is. Okay, so now let's take a look at clients. So we obviously gonna be managing all our clients uh, with Opus 1IO. I'm gonna refresh here and I can see all these clients. Um, I can uh, filter them by statuses. We have different statuses like member, member loss, prospect, prospect sleep, prospect loss, prospect follow up. Uh, you can t uh, categorize your, your, your students that way and search for them easily. I'm gonna take a look at the Doe family here. The Doe family, um, has four members, they're actually all connected. Alice, Jane, John, and Tom, actually, uh, Jane and John are the parents. Alice and Tom are gonna be the, the kids here. But each individual have their own account and we know who is who, who's taking lessons, who is paying for them, who is involved with those kids, etc., etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, so here we have mom and dad. If I click on dad, I can see dad's account. I'm being reminded, by the way, that there are terms and conditions that have not been accepted yet. 
uh, we're going to deal with this in a few minutes. Um, I can see when I look at John's uh, uh, profile information, I can see his two kids. John, the dad, could be taking lessons himself as well or may not. And uh, we have uh, um, uh, the two kids uh, underneath here. When I click on Tom, I can easily navigate between the two different kids, the siblings. I can see who the teachers are. I can see the account managers. You can have more than two account managers. You, have, you can have complex family with mom, dad, stepdad, stepmom, granny, godfather, caretaker, babysitter, you name it. Uh, so different people can be set as account managers. And it's very clear when you look at these accounts, who is who. Um, have it, you can have their information specifically. You know who's taking lessons here. We know that Tom is taking lessons every uh, Monday at 3 p.m. Uh, and we can see one on his subscription, which is tied to his weekly lessons, um, that he has a monthly payment. We support, by the way, uh, different payment uh, models uh, for group classes, for private lessons. It could be, um, usually most schools will do monthly payments. Um, it could be monthly uh, flat fee with different proration models for the first months, or it could be um, a, a monthly payment with uh, a per lesson pricing where some months you have five lessons, so you pay for five lessons. Some months you have only four lessons or three lessons, depending on teacher absences or holidays, and the, the, the invoices are generated dynamically. Uh, we'll talk about invoicing and billing and, and payments in a minute, and it's completely automated. And that's the beauty of uh, using Opus One IO to, to scale your business. So if I uh, update this subscription here to uh, take a look at Tom's subscription, I can see uh, quickly that uh, Tom is the client. The payer is set to dad. Um, dad is the one, in this case, who will have the credit card, for example. But uh, you can switch it to mom uh, or to another family member. So you can have uh, grandma pay paying lessons for one kid and uh, godfather taking paying lessons for another kid and still have mom and dad on the account because mom and dad need to be aware of uh, how the kids are doing and need to pick them up and organize their lessons. So. This can be completely uh, handled uh, effectively. In some cases, uh, if you have families uh, that are uh, di with a divorced parents that they absolutely need to do a split 50-50 payments, you can assign a secondary payer and the system will automatically uh, not just auto pay the invoices, but actually split them 50-50 between two payers. Uh, so you don't have to do it manually. As I just mentioned, all the payments are on auto pay, all the subscriptions are auto pay by default with payment reminders, although you can turn it off in certain cases if you don't want that. Uh, you can also assign a third party payer. We have sometimes schools dealing with charter schools or homeschooling association or other third party payers. So you could assign a third party payer and take payments separately for, spe for specific uh, students. We have terms and conditions that can be required to be accepted. You can mark them as accepted if you want to just uh, do it manually or we'll, we'll do it in a different way in a few minutes. You can assign discounts. Discounts can be um, uh, temporary or can be ongoing. Um, you can say, for example, you're going to get a 15% discount because you're grandfathered under, uh, under a specific uh, you know, legacy price, but that discount can go away at the end of the year, for example. So you would simply just uh, set an expiry date and the discount will be automatically assessed to all future invoices until December 31st, for example. You can update the pricing, which will uh, update the, the invoices uh, as well automatically. You can set sibling discounts. You can also uh, control when auto pay kicks in. Uh, you can have auto pay kick in a few days before the due date. Due date is always the first of the month for monthly invoices, uh, but auto pay can kick in a few days before or a few days after. Uh, late fees can be assessed as well automatically. You can configure this um, as well. So as you can see, a lot of options to really automate everything in terms of not just generating the invoices, but also getting them paid automatically. Okay, so that's uh, an overview of uh, a student's uh, account. Uh, I can leave notes on that account. So I can say, for example, uh, that uh, you know uh, Tom's dad uh, just called and they have questions about something. And I can even tag one of my staff members and say, hey, at... Um, Anna, for example, uh, please uh, give them a call back. They have a question about this or that. So you can very easily put notes. So as you can see, uh, the system will act as a CRM. You can manage your clients, your prospect. We'll talk about that more throughout the demo. Okay, now I'm going to log in as a parent and show you a little bit uh, about the parent side of things. Uh, so I'm going to open another window. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of different things. I'm going to log in as John Doe, the dad of the Doe family that we just saw. Notice, by the way, that you, in your case, you would see your own logo, your own background, uh, obviously. 
And as you can see, I logged in as John Doe here. Um, John Doe has already signed up his kids, for example, Alice and Tom. As you notice, as I'm logging in, the, the system is actually optimized also for mobile. So if you're on a phone, you don't need an app. You'll have a great mobile experience or a tablet experience, uh, depending on your screen size, completely dynamically. So we use very modern technologies to handle that automatically. Um, so I'm going to put this aside. I want to show you a little bit how John Doe became a student first or how his kids were enrolled first. Uh, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to uh, review and accept the terms and conditions very quick. So uh, this is going to be your studio policy. Um, when people self-enroll, they're going to be prompted to accept the terms and conditions before they can enroll. But if you enroll them over the phone, for example, or in person at the studio, uh, and then you, you the system will notify the parents that they need to accept the terms and conditions and bother them until they do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms and conditions here. Uh, I'm the dad here, so I'm just... Uh, being prompted to do it when I log in. As you can see, it's very fast. And you can have a very long studio policy that uh, the dad or the mom would have to accept here. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside a little bit and show you a little bit about the journey first, about how does a customer sign up for lessons and how we streamline it. Um, I'm gonna actually show you the journey from an actual website. I'm gonna use my own school as an example. Uh, so here's my website, regular, typical music school website. You notice we have a login button for existing customers to log in. But for new customers, we have these call to actions to book trial lessons or enroll in group classes. And you can customize this in different ways. Um, and when I click uh, book a, a, a trial lesson, I'm gonna be taken to the Opus One IO website um, and I'm gonna be able to pick uh, a, uh, again, everything is optimized for mobile. Um, so you can, it will adapt to your screen size. And I can pick here an existing teacher or cello for piano, cello, violin, whatever instrument you offer with different age restrictions, different pricing. So for example, I'm gonna pick here a piano trial lesson, 45 minutes. I'm going to see photos of your uh, studio uh, that you can uh, highlight. Um, you're gonna have descriptions about the service, uh, age restrictions, pricing, description about your school and, you, and the uh, service that you offer. And we're going to see uh, your teachers um, the more availability they have, the more they're gonna be at the top. If they have little availability, they're gonna be at the bottom because we, we wanna prioritize teachers that need more students. Uh, so we're gonna see fo teachers' photos. As I said, you will not see their last name if you're not existing a client and you're just browsing. Uh, you can see uh, something like a level or a secondary attributes that we call them. You can put anything you want there. You can put the instruments, you can put the pronouns, you can put, um, you can use their, um, the level, their degrees, uh, whatever you want. And, but these are information uh, details that will be displayed to the end users when they book their lessons, including also this, these categorized attributes like the instrument they teach, the, um, the um, exam they provide, etc. Uh, and other information parents might find in, important. As you notice, I can see the different availability slots. Uh, there is a lot of different ways to configure what's visible, what's not. Uh, here we have teachers that teach at multiple locations on different days and also available for online students, where, even though they are teaching from the studio. Uh, if I pick uh, a time slot, let's say 11.30 p.m., um, uh, sorry, 11.30 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. Pacific uh, at the Mountain View Studio, I'm going to be able to pick this time and basically go in and book that lesson. When I book that trial lesson, uh, right now I'm already logged in as, a, as an admin, but um, at this point, a client will be prompted to create their account, enter their, their last name, first name, uh, email, phone number, and their kids' info, uh, and then they will be able to select the right kid if they have multiple kids. Um, of course, we're going to be also about able to provide a credit card number uh, to pay for our uh, 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 trial lesson here and uh, accept the terms and conditions before we can go ahead and book. And finally, very important, uh, we can also leave a note for the teacher and that helps the teacher prepare for that trial lesson. The more information you provide the teacher, the better prepared they will be. They will appreciate getting a little bit of a heads up on who the kid is. Uh, they will already know what their age is, uh, but they will want to know are they beginners, are they advanced, do they want to work on classical music, pop, jazz, do they already have a piano at home, I don't know, whatever is, is relevant for them to prepare for the lesson and show up prepared and, and maximize the effect of that uh, trial lesson. Now, when those trial lessons are booked, uh, as, a, as a business owner, you can go to your uh, conversion report and this will show you all your trial lessons, private or group lessons and whether they convert it or not. And this will show you by default 30 days of trial lessons. This is my actual school. As you see, we had about 100 trials in the last 30 days. 
And for each of those trials, I can see the student's name, I can see uh, the service, the location, the date, the teacher, whether they self-booked or not, whether they were able to uh, convert automatically or convert in general. Automatic conversion is a little bit more complicated, but basically what happens is as soon as you take attendance for that trial lesson, they also get auto an automated email with a prompt to sign up for that spot if the spot is available on an, on an ongoing basis. If the spot is not available on an ongoing basis, we give them an alternative, an alter an link, an alternative booking link that they can where they can browse other availabilities depending on your strategy for signing up students if there are conflicts in the future or not. Uh, so as you can see here, some of those students did receive the notification and did convert. Uh, and you can keep track of all your students and you can also see whether they're already a member or not and be able to sign them up uh, if they and follow up with them and, and access their account very easily. And um, um, if, if they need to be followed up, have your staff follow up with these, for these uh, uh, students by SMS, email, phone. Okay, so uh, that's how your students will get in. They will uh, see your uh, self-booking um, uh, prompts on your ads, on your newsletter, on your website, uh, on your different marketing channels, and they will self-book lessons. And you will get a lot more enrollment than, you, than, than by just uh, the typical way, which is uh, have an inquiry form on your website and have people uh, fill that form and then calling them back the next day and then they don't pick up their phone because they're busy and etc etc and then three days later they finally booked a lesson so you can save a lot of time and labor costs and, and efforts and get a lot more students to enroll in your school because people will literally be uh, booking trial lessons if you offer trial lessons obviously you don't have to um, people will be booking lessons 24 7 without needing anybody to do it for them um, as i said you can skip trial lessons and have people self-enroll directly for weekly lessons and charge them automatically for their first month's tuition and and have them on a, on a monthly uh, subscription right away. Both options are possible. So uh, now I'm gonna go back to the demo. We're gonna take a look now at the customer side of things. So here I'm a, I'm a client. I logged in as John Doe as I did earlier. Uh, and we're gonna look at cancellations and makeups because cancellations and makeups are usually the one of the highest and biggest pain points for music schools. You would have most schools not want, not wanting to deal with those makeups and cancellation because it's too much headaches and uh, it, it takes a lot of overhead or um, offering flexible uh, makeups uh, but then be drowning in emails and SMS all day long and not being able to scale. And the idea is to provide the best experience for your customers while making it as painless as possible for your own staff and making it manageable and scalable, right? So how do you do that? You do that by automating everything, basically letting people self-enroll, self-cancel, self-book makeups uh, easily so that you don't have to do it for them. And then you can have the best of both worlds, the convenience for the customers and being able obviously to charge them more because they have, they will never miss lessons and they will always be able to book makeups easily. Uh, and I'm talking here about a group of private makeups, doesn't matter, we support both. Um, and also making it manageable so that, you know, you can end up with 90% of your trials being self-enrolled and 90% of your cancellation being self-canceled and 90% of your uh, makeups being self-booked. So you basically only deal with the exceptions and the escalations and the special cases. Um, so you can scale a lot more with, by doing a lot less work. So I'm going to uh, go to Tom Doe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel a couple of lessons. So I'm going to click cancel. This lesson is on August 1st. And as the time of the recording, this is not a late cancellation because uh, we're a few days away from August 1st. Um, however, if this was a late cancellation, the system will tell me. So when I click cancel, the system tells me what, if I'm eligible for a makeup credit or not. If this was a late cancellation and you do not provide makeup credits for late cancellations, the system will tell you you are not getting a makeup for this one. Um, and the, the other thing is you're going to have um, the studio policy in your own words, spelled out in your own words, explained clearly here. So this is configurable, obviously, and you want to have a few bullet points that clearly explain how your cancellation policy works, what is your late cancellation, how many makeups do people get, you know, how can they use them, how long do they have, and all of that is configurable. And the system will automatically uh, show the parents uh, or the students uh, if they're getting a makeup credit or not. So if I do decide to continue with the cancellation, I'm getting my makeup credit right away. And as you can see, the, credit, the makeup credit is issued right away. I can see that it was a makeup credit for a lesson that was supposed to be on August 1st. Now, if I do uh, scroll down, you see my uh, August is already paid, but September is not paid yet, which is normal because uh, September invoice will be due September 1st and it's not due right now. 
However, if I try to cancel a lesson ahead of time, let's say I know I'm going to be away on September 12th, and I would like to uh, be a good citizen and cancel my lesson ahead of time so to open up the spot for somebody else. Um, in this case, there is a little um, a caveat. We will not let you cancel your lesson unless you pay for it. Why is that? Because uh, we don't want to give you a makeup credit for a lesson you haven't really paid for yet. But if you do want to do, uh, do want to cancel your lesson ahead of time, we're going to give you an option to actually pay for that tuition uh, and uh, just pay it a little bit of, uh, uh, ahead of time. So here I'm going to uh, add a payment method very quickly, um, add a credit card. Obviously this is a fake card here for, the, for demo purposes. And I'm gonna be able to uh, pay my tuition very easily in a couple of clicks. As you notice, my, now my uh, September tuition is paid and the October invoice is automatically generated right away. So all the billing, as, as I said before, is completely automated. You don't have to generate invoices or invoice clients. It's all automatic. And on the first of the month or whatever date you decide, they will be auto paid automatically. So 95, 98% of your invoices will be auto paid and you'll just have to deal with a few uh, expired cards or, or, or declined transactions. So now I can go ahead and continue canceling this lesson. It's not a late cancellation and I'm going to be able to get another makeup credit. Great. Let's do it. Now I have two makeup credits. By the way, if you go back to the um, other uh, window as an admin, you can see these makeup credits by just refreshing the accounts. And of course, as an admin, you have more options to uh, um, you know, issue more makeups, cancel them, delete them, uh, whatever you want to do with them. Now, let's say I'm trying to cancel the third lesson, right? This is where you're going to have some level of limits, right? We don't want to just let people go crazy and cancel everything and then request refunds later because they did not understand what they were doing. Uh, so we want to make it as clear as possible. If I do try to cancel a third lesson, for example, the system will tell me, okay, you've hit your limit. You only have, you only allow two makeup credits at a time. Um, and this is configurable. You can set those limits the way you want. It could be limits in time, limits at a time. It could be uh, issuing makeup credits, but those makeup credits will expire after seven days, 15 days, 30 days, whatever you want. So this is completely customizable and configurable for your needs. Uh, but here, if, I, if I'm smart, I'm probably not going to cancel this lesson. I'm going to use my makeup credits first. Now you're going to ask me, how do I use those makeup credits? Simple as just clicking use. I have a makeup credit. I'm going to use it. And I'm going to be able to book a guitar makeup lesson. And I'm going to click use and then I'm going to be taken to the self booking interface um, where usually you'll have a little bit more details about your makeup uh, services. Um, this is pretty bare bones. In, um, in most cases, people are going to be book booking their makeup lessons with their same teacher, right? Because they're used to their teacher and they usually would want to take lessons with the same teacher. However, uh, if their regular teacher is not available, you don't want them to have excuses that they could not find a time. So we let them book makeups with other teachers that are available for the same instrument. So for example, I'm just going to book with Joe here, uh, but it could be with any teacher that is available for that service. And uh, another thing you notice that's very powerful and nobody else does is that teacher Joe is actually, uh, if you look at his schedule, let me put this aside for a second. I'm going to go to Joe Satriani's uh, schedule here. Teacher Joe is actually wide open from 2 to 9 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday and Mondays, right? And actually has a cancel lesson here that we just canceled. Um, but his availability is not really wide open for the clients because we don't want random people to book lessons at 2, 5, 6, 8 p.m. and have all these holes on your teacher's schedule. So you can or not, depending on your, on your strategy, you can uh, allow people to only book time uh, within a certain window of time that will be usually around... Uh, existing lessons or between existing lessons at a, at a higher priority. So right now you see I'm only seeing the 315 slot and the 415 slot. But if for the sake of the demo, I'm going to reactivate this lesson here um, just for the sake of the demo. And we're going to move it to, let's say, uh, 8 p.m. So I'm, as an admin, I can very easily, or let's say 715, I can very easily move lessons around and override things. And uh, now if I try to book a makeup lesson on August 1st, it will only let me book lessons around that time because we don't want people to book earlier in the day and have these big holes in the teacher's schedule. So now if I click August 1st, you see I'm only getting the, the two slots around six uh, around 7, 15 p.m. So very, very powerful booking capabilities uh, to only um, let people book times at, at times that are optimum for your teacher's schedule. Again, this is configurable. You don't have to set it that way, uh, but most people do. So let's pick a, a time for that makeup. I'm going to click book. And just like you can do for your makeup, uh, sorry, for your trial lessons, 
you can for your makeups um, also leave a note for the teacher so you don't necessarily need, need to leave a note if it's for you, your regular teacher they already know you but if you're booking a makeup with another teacher you can give them some information and say Tom is working on a certain song and you know and then that way the teacher can maybe brush up on that song and be ready to demonstrate and, and know the song uh, uh, and other piece and, and be ready for that I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms and conditions and book so as you can see here in just a few clicks I was able to uh, cancel a couple of lessons uh, the teacher the schedule the payroll everything is updated automatically um, people are notified uh, and then I'm able to get credits, the school policy is enforced, and I'm able to book my makeups very easily, uh, entirely on my own, right? And including, um, you, you also got a glimpse a little bit of, uh, of the scheduling and the billing and the invoices being generated automatically as well. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to show you the teacher side of things. So we're going to log in now as a teacher and see a little bit about what can teachers do and go very quickly over all the different features for teachers. I'm going to log in as a teacher. Make this window a little bit bigger. So by default, teachers are pretty limited. They only have access to their own students, right? We call them limited staff, although you can give them more capabilities if you allow it. Uh, teacher Joe only has one student right now. You can see, you can only see the name of the student and their age. You can see more details about that student, and you can even allow if you really want to. In certain cases, it does make sense, but in most cases, it doesn't. Sorry, you can basically let um, uh, the teacher see the, 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 the details for the parents, uh, phone number and addresses and emails if you, if you allow it. In most cases, you probably won't want that. Uh, now, uh, the, um, the um, schedule, this is the, the teacher's schedule, so they can browse their own schedule um, and it will also look nice on their mobile phone as well uh, and see their own students. Teachers can run their own payroll, so we, we support payroll. Probably not going to talk a lot, a, lot about, a, lot about, a lot about it during the demo because that's its own topic and can be pretty complex, but we let you basically run payroll and calculate what you owe your teachers based on what they're teaching. We don't do the payout and the taxes. That will be different in every country, every state. Uh, but we'll t calculate how many hours and, and based on different rates, whether you pay your teachers for their availability, for their block times, for their breaks, and for their lessons, obviously. And teachers will be able to also check their own schedule and see based on, um, let's say, next month, based on a certain time period, they can see basically how much they're going to get paid um, based on the different rates that you've set for them. All right. So... Uh, you know, it could be different uh, duration, different rates, etc. And it's a good way for teachers to kind of get an idea of uh, what their next paycheck will look like. Teachers can also uh, upload and, uh, and manage files. So this is the goal here is not to replace uh, Google Drive or uh, other companies that do that much better than us, but just to provide some basic file sharing capabilities so that students and teachers can ex exchange music sheets, uh, recorded videos, uh, mini lessons, uh, um, um, lesson notes, uh, PDFs, any file, anything that they might find relevant for the lesson. Teachers can upload a music sheet. So let's just pretend this is a music sheet. And uh, you can create directories, you can delete, you can move them back and forth. So let's say this is my classical repertoire. Um, or you can have folders per student and you can organize your files. So a file sharing system right there in the app. And from there, you can easily share these uh, with your students and send messages. We're going to do that in a minute. And students can do the same thing, by the way. So it makes it easy for students and parents and teachers to exchange files uh, without exposing any email or phone numbers so that it goes through the platform. The other advantage of this, and I'm going to get to that in a second, is as you can see, I can, uh, as a teacher, I can see the comments that the parent left when they booked that trial lesson or that makeup lesson. And what I have all my teachers do in my school is I have them write lesson notes and homework and other information about the lessons and how the kids are doing uh, after every lesson systematically. And parents love this. They're getting an overview of how the kids are doing. Uh, they know what their homework is and what they're paying for. So let's just pretend we're leaving a note here as a teacher. Tom, great job today. Practice left hand this and that, page whatever. Practice louder here, softer there. Practice, practice, practice. And uh, also check out uh, this uh, uh, file, let's check out this music sheet. And I'm going to attach a music sheet here uh, that I uploaded previously and have it share with the students and send. Now, the parents and the students, uh, whoever is connected to that account uh, and have emails will receive a notification. 
And uh, if I log in as a parent, I will also, so I can get it in my email, uh, but if I just log in also to my account, I can also just refresh and see the note that the teacher left. And from there, I can also access the music sheet that was shared with me or the video or the file, whatever, PDF or guitar tabs, whatever was shared. As a parent, I can also respond back if you allow it. You can disable that if you don't like it. Uh, and I can say, hey, teacher, you know, thanks. Uh, what is the plan uh, for the next recital? And uh, post, right? And teachers, parents can securely and effectively, uh, you know, exchange messages without exposing any private information as well. Um, now, the other very important thing here is that let's say a teacher, a teacher Joe needs to take some time off. So teacher Joe can submit a time off request and say, hey, I'd like to take uh, next week off. Uh, let's pick uh, the week of, uh, let's say, August 8th to uh, August 12th and say, I need a break. And uh, we will show them how many lessons they're going to be missing, how many hours they were supposed to work. The request is submitted. The manager is notified automatically. And as a manager, you can go and uh, see the submit the submitted time of request, and you can go ahead and process them. So I'm not going to go through all the options here. Let's be nice and approve that request. And now that the request is approved, we know who approved it, when, and also you can assign somebody in your staff to take care of it. Let's say you have a business, an office manager that's going to be assigning subs. Uh, you can go ahead and then they can switch that status to processing completed so you can keep track of the status uh, and all of that. You see the schedule is automatically blocked. So that whole week that teacher Joe is going to be away, the schedule is blocked at that point. As soon as you approve the request, the schedule gets blocked so nobody can book lessons at that time anymore. And then you can go ahead and deal with the subbing. You can do it individually. So let's just say here, we're going to just assign one teacher and leave a little note and say Joe is away uh, on uh, whatever that day, August 8th. You're getting a sub. Steve is going to be your sub and update. So you can very quickly, either individually, uh, notify parents um, that um, uh, teacher is away and, and assign another teacher. And I will show you in a minute, you can do it as a batch as well. So the beauty of this is now that Steve is going to be subbing for Joe. So Joe and I can see that his request has been approved and is being processed. Uh, if Steve uh, uh, logs into his account, he's going to see uh, Tom pop up on his account now that Steve is going to be subbing for him. And he's going to be able to see the comments and the lesson notes from the previous lessons uh, that Tom had uh, with teacher Joe, including the music sheets or the videos or whatever they worked on. Uh, so that makes it uh, makes it subbing and makeups between teachers much more easy, uh, much easier, uh, easier to set up. No need for teachers to send each other's notes. Everything is on the student's account right there in Opus 1.io. So that's very, very uh, useful. Okay, now let me show you a couple of other cool things that we do. Uh, we won't have time to go through every single feature, but kind of uh, give you a little bit of an overview of uh, uh, some of the highlights. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, my calendar. So you already saw, uh, let's take a look at Tom Doe really quick. So if we go back to Tom Doe, I can look him up very quickly here. You see everything is fast and snappy. We can see that on the uh, the 8th, uh, on the, sorry, on the 1st, he has a makeup. We booked that. On the 8th, he has a sub. So we have a substitute here. So it's also showing in the account. Now, let's say that another use case, let's say today, um, let's say Carlos just notified us that he's going to be uh, sick today. Uh, so let's look at a, different, a few different scenarios. I'm in the calendar here. I'm going to filter my calendar on Carlos and uh, I'm going to uh, see his availability. So he was actually supposed to start teaching at 2 and he has his first students at 2.30. Um, and now let's just say, for example, let's say Carlos just um, uh, is not feeling great. He can still teach, but he's going to be online for for safety reason. Let's say he maybe he got COVID or whatever. Uh, we can do a batch update and we can update the location, the room, the staff, anything we want. So what we're going to do here is going to select the online location and uh, tell everybody, tell the parents, you know, Carlos is uh, uh, quarantining and he's going to be online today, right? So this note is going to be SMS and or email to parents, depending on the options that you have on. And in one click, all these lessons are going to be reassigned to the online location. And uh, the parents will be notified that Carlos is exceptionally online today because of COVID or whatever. Uh, now, if uh, let's say Carlos cannot teach, you can actually also batch update all these lessons and assign them to another teacher. So let's say you know that um, uh, we have teacher um, Angela, who is available today as a sub. Uh, we're going to say Carlos uh, is too sick to teach. You know, and I, and Angela will be a sub. And in one click, all these lessons are going to be updated and assigned to Angela. 
And actually in the email that the parents receive, we don't just tell them Angela will be your sub. We show them the photo. We show, show them Angela's photo and also her bio. So you know who's subbing for your kid and who your kid is going to be locked in the room with um, um, today. So parents appreciate to get a heads up, especially when the kids are younger. They like to know if they're not going to have their regular teacher, they might want to know what the teacher looks like so they feel more comfortable when they come in for the lesson. So sending them the photo and the bio of the teacher helps you know, prevent drama and prevent parents from uh, not being happy having a sub that day. Now, if Angela actually can't make it, so let's actually uh, go back to uh, Angela here. Uh, we can actually also just batch cancel these lessons. So I actually double booked Angela here just for the sake of the demo. We're gonna go ahead and just batch cancel these lessons. Okay, this is a teacher absence. And uh, we can say, you know, Angela, I can't make it today. You're getting a makeup credit. Whatever note you want to leave here. And all these lessons are going to be batch canceled. All the parents are going to be notified by SMS and or email, depending on their settings. And uh, you will be able to actually, you'll see all these students, uh, this one happens to have the same photo, um, are going to have a makeup credit. And then people can just log in and they can book their makeups on their own very easily. Uh, and for some reason, you can also configure that that makeup maybe uh, is going to expire in a week. So they only have a couple of weeks or whatever time uh, to use that makeup. Very easy to do. Now, let's say the parent calls and like, hey, we'd like to use that makeup credit for another instrument. You can also swap easily services and say, OK, sure, you want to use a, you want to do a guitar makeup instead of a voice makeup and we'll just switch the service for you. Or maybe, maybe we can even uh, transfer it between siblings. This is not something they can do on their own, but they can request it and your staff can do that very easily in a couple of clicks. Very powerful. Um, so we have a lot of these batch updates, batch cancellation, batch attendance, um, but also um, another thing that's very common is you need to notify parents for something. So let's say you want to look at your calendar and say, okay, I would like to send a batch SMS to all, all my guitar students, so only the students of that particular teacher, or only the students taking lessons on a particular day or at a particular location. So you can filter by staff, service, location, room, anything relevant. So let's, let's take a look, for example, at the weekly schedule and let's go to next week. So we have everybody. So that's a lot of students right there. But we're going to say, okay, I only want to see, let's say, all the guitar service and uh, whether they're makeup or regular lesson trial, select all, right? So I'm just going to select all these services. And from there, I can just do a simple batch SMS. So very easy. I can uh, SMS 100 people right there. And we're targeting the students here, but obviously most students are going to be kids without phones. Uh, but their account managers will get the SMS as well. So you're not just targeting the kid, you're targeting what matters, which is the parents in most cases. So you can say, hey, you know, uh, please uh, give us a Google review or, you know, uh, don't forget to sign up for the recital or whatever you want to say, right? And you can send these SMS in one click. Very, very easy and very simple. Um, you can do it by service, by room, by location, any filter, uh, any, any filter you want. You can also do, just do a batch email. So a batch email will open your email client. Uh, and we'll just basically uh, put all your uh, account managers uh, and the students and the parents in uh, BCC so you can easily email them and send them an email from there as well. So this is very convenient. You're going to be using this literally every day. It's going to make your life so much better. Um, so let me go through a couple of other cool things that we do have. We have um, uh, SMS, so you can uh, have a full interface. This is optional. It's only available in the US, by the way. We're looking at making this available in other countries. But you can chat with your customers by SMS, send and receive SMS. You can see who from your staff has sent the SMS and have multiple people chatting with multiple customers in parallel, all on the same number. And all the notifications that are sent by Opus One IO will be from the same number. That could be also your voice, uh, your, your, your number uh, where people can call you. Uh, and you can basically you know, manage these conversations, assign them to people, uh, get new prospects, get people to sign up. Uh, this also SMS your, your teachers as well and all very, very conveniently right, right from there uh, and uh, you know, uh, replace your external SMS system and have everything in one place. And when you're talking to a parent, you can quickly see uh, who you're talking to and access their account very easily because everything is in one place. So very, very convenient. Uh, we also have a smart wait list. I'm not going to go through uh, how it works, but basically if somebody tells you I would like to um, uh, be notified when that teacher uh, time opens up because maybe they're completely full right now, but I would like to get a notification as soon as teacher Joe uh, opens on Tuesday or Wednesday between five and six, then you can put them on the smart wait list. 
and they will be automatically notified when the time opens up. And not only they will be notified, but you can also have an option to have them self-enroll and basically book, book themselves on their own and take the spot so that they can uh, secure it. We talked about payroll. Uh, you can run payroll for different teachers, a lot of different options there. Uh, you can set different rates for teachers. You can set, you can determine whether your teachers are getting paid for their availability, for their, for their breaks. Different breaks can be at different rates. You can pay them for makeups or cancellations as well, up to you. Uh, teacher can request time off. We talked about this earlier. Um, we're going to have also uh, promotion campaigns. You can set up promotion campaigns and say, you know, we would like to give a special link to some people, just like having a coupon code. They don't have to type. It's in the link. And if they use that particular link, they'll get a free trial or a free registration or some other uh, promotion that you can run for a period of time. And then we can have a lot of, uh, you know, conversion reports, uh, group class enrollment reports, staff reports, where you can see how many uh, active members your staff have, how, how much revenue they bring, they're bringing in, all of that. And then finally, a lot of other, other reporting, um, like attendance report, uh, credits report, invoices report, and see your billing uh, for, for a period of time. Um, and, and be able to really run your reports by location, by, by type of income, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, subscription, transaction, and also uh, for your staff that don't need to see all your financial, you can give them access to your overdue invoices so they can follow up on invoices that are overdue, right? So um, I wanna show you one last thing. Um, we also have make it very easy to book new students. So you can just click book appointment, pick a service, uh, pick recurring. And instead of having to open the calendar and uh, and wonder you know what is available if you want a certain teacher let's say i really want uh, joe satriani at a certain time and that teacher is not available we'll tell you it's not available but we'll give you alternatives right we don't just tell you it's not available uh, and you have to open the calendar to see who else is available you can just see suggested availabilities right there uh, so for example let's say you actually want your lesson on a tuesday and um, let's pick 1 p.m and let's say you know uh, teacher Joe is actually not available at 1 p.m., but we can say, well, but he is available at 2, right? So we can actually uh, let you pick that time instead. Uh, and also, as you scroll, you can see that some spots are going to have um, um, a, a little sign that tells you that this time is actually available on an ongoing basis, right, without conflicts. Right now, this time is actually not available because the following week, uh, teacher Joe is on vacation and he's not available. Uh, so if you book that time, there's going to be conflicts in the future. Uh, you can still go ahead and do it and say, okay, I want to book the 3 p.m. time. Uh, and you'll be told that he's not available on the 9th because he's, go he's away on vacation. And that's fine. You can, turn you can still go ahead. We're just giving you a warning. Um, now, if there, was if there was more than one conflict because he actually has an ongoing student there, you may want to pick another time. Now, alternatively, you have teacher Steve that doesn't have any conflicts and you can just go ahead and book with him instead. Uh, and then you see there's no conflict here. You can go ahead and book that time. You can enroll a new student on the spot right there. Or if the student already exists, you can just uh, pick the students and, and book them. Uh, we also have ability to put appointments on hold and also put them on the wait list or go ahead and book them. And then, you know, you can apply, you know, different depending on your settings, different proration or different uh, um, payment options per lesson, flat fee, whatever you want. You can enroll them and pay later or you can enroll them now, enroll them now and pay now. Uh, you can use credits, you can apply promotions, and it also you can send a proposal. So let's say you're talking to a customer that you don't have a credit card on file yet and um, you want to give them a way to sign up on their own, review the terms and conditions and pay on their own and enter the credit card online directly. You can send them a proposal and you can even put that time on hold uh, and say, okay, I'm going to hold this spot for you and if I don't hear back from you by, let's say, tomorrow night, uh, the spot will open up for somebody else again. So you have different options and you can send them a proposal and have them sign up on their own. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's it for today. I hope this was useful. Um, if you have any questions, please, you know, schedule a call with us. Um, go ahead and um, uh, contact us. We also have great support from within the app. When you create an account, you can chat with our team here. And as you can see, you'll have myself or Will or somebody else in the team and answer your question as soon as possible within, within an hour or less. You can also browse a knowledge base, lots of uh, tutorials and useful resources you can look at as well. Uh, so yeah, we look forward to hear back from you and um, um, we hope you enjoyed this, this demo and thank you for watching.